So in this video, uh, we're looking at really simple ways of doing typography inspired by sort of psychedelic style design. So when we're talking about psychedelic style design, it's this kind of thing, clashing colours, warped text, um, really bright, neon, all of this sort of liquidy, warpy sort of lettering that sort of blends into um, letters inside of shapes really just sort of exaggerated and you can see you've got this sort of like clear effect these clear sort of fonts that they use regularly these sort of like trippy style stuff gradients all that kind of stuff so these are the, the three things i'll be showing you today which are nice and simple um i've used a downloaded font for this one so it's quite often looking at worth sort of googling psychedelic style fonts psychedelic style typography um, and downloading a font because you're then going to get a more sort of authentic result. Um, we're going to look at warping and we're going to look at liquefying. So if I go to a new document, I've chosen the word surreal because that's what it reminds me of. So I'm going to type that and I type it in all caps. The reason I'm doing it in all caps is because it will fit the space better because they're all the same height. Uh, I'm just going to do that in black because I want it to fit in my box. And I'm going to find the font that I've downloaded for this, make it a bit smaller. So you can see that fits in one long line. If it was not all capitals, if I type it in lowercase, you can see the difference. Ah, so this font's in caps anyway. Um, but if I was to type that in lowercase, we would get that sort of gradation between the line, which is not what we want. So we're going to have two of those so that it gives us a nice big box. You could just choose a font and then sort of like stretch it um, like that to make it fill the space a bit better. But for, for what I want, I want two pieces. I'm going to rasterize those. So if you're not familiar with rasterizing, rasterizing sort of flattens that. So you can see now they're not separate anymore. Um, I can't go in and change the letters. I can't go in and change the fonts. If I spelt it wrong, I'm stuck with it. So you kind of want to rasterize as a last resort, but in order to then distort this text, we're going to need to rasterize it. I'm also going to merge these layers. Merging is a similar thing. So as soon as I merge the layers, they then become one layer. You can see they're one layer. I can't separate them. So again, I've got to be really happy with what they look like and where they are before I merge them. I've merged them because I want to edit them together. I want to give them a similar effect and I want them to be one sort of block of text. I am just going to stretch this a little so that we get it a bit taller. Now, if I go up to edit, and I'm looking for transform. So I want to warp this. So the warp effect is under edit, transform, warp. Now you'll see at the moment it doesn't do anything because we've not chosen how we want to do it. So you can see the warp here says custom. I could do custom. So custom will let me physically go in and move these in the way I want to. You can see that grid appears. So if I got an image in the background and I wanted it to, I don't know, look like a pair of lips or something, I could then sort of control that to go into that shape. So I can warp this about however I want to. So if you're looking for a particular shape, a custom sort of warp can be quite good, etc. But it really is just playing around with how you want things to look. So we've got that custom warp there. For this one, I'm going to have a look at some of the preset warps. So I'm going to go back to edit, transform and warp. We've got some presets in here. So for example, if I click arc, you can see it arcs up and I can control the angle of that arc. Um, I can control whether it arcs out to one side more than the other. If I go to, this is the one I'm gonna look at today, I think, is wave. Now I want that to be sort of like one normal size box. Let's take that down to zero. So now you can see it stays in the same box, but we've got this sort of wave happening in the middle, which I really like the style of. So I'm just going to go for sort of there. I want it to be fairly exaggerated, but not too exaggerated. So that's my, my warp effect. So I'm going to tick that off. So now they're locked like that. I can't edit them, can't change them. The last thing I want to do, if I look back here, is I'm going to add a gradient over the top. So I want it to have this sort of like nice gradient style effect that we've seen on some of these other examples. 
like these where we've got these nice gradients happening. So I'll show you my gradient tool to start with. My gradient tool is on the same sort of section of my toolbar as my paint bucket tool. I've got a box up here. If I click the box itself, you can see I can change the gradient or I can go into some of the preset gradients. So if I open these up, we've got some nice preset gradients. So I've chosen this one, quite like that. Um, you can edit that if you wanted to make it slightly more one colour or more another colour or get rid of a colour entirely and just drag it off and get rid of it. Um, so you can control that. So I'm just going to go back and do that preset one. Now, if I, you can see straight away I've got the, the no icon. It won't let me do it. It's going to ask me to, to rasterize. If I click that layer and just apply that gradient now, so I'm just going to drag across my screen. First thing you'll see is it goes in the angle that I drag it. So if I undo that again and I drag straight across, it goes straight across. If I drag from top to bottom, it goes from top to bottom, which is all well and good, but you can see it replaces my text. So I've lost my text layer now, I don't know where that's gone. So the gradient tool will apply over the layer you put it on. So I need to make a new layer first, straight away, so that that's not going to affect my text. My text is still there, and put the text on top, etc. I could do this as that, and then use a, a blend mode to get it to go inside my, my text, so I could do that. Um, obviously now that gradient's on its own layer, I can make it smaller, so I can make it fit over my text because I want that blue on there. So I could do that and use blend mode with those two, which does the job. Or if I undo that, I could select my text first. So I could magic one my text. Um, if you've not used magic one before, it selects everything that it thinks is the same colour. Um, so here it's selecting each letter. If I untick contiguous, it will select everything that is black. So it selects all of the text. And then I could do a new layer. So that new layer has now got my selection on it, you can see. And then I could do my gradient tool. So in this case, my gradient will just go inside the place where I've put it. So you can see it only exists there now. Um, so if I command D to get rid of that. So it's really up to you how you want to do this. Blend modes work just fine. Um, but they do blend over everything else. So you'll notice if I put it on that, and then I draw myself uh, to do a rectangle. You can see my black rectangle is also affected by the, the blend mode because the blend mode layer is above it. So I quite like doing it in the side of the selection because then I know that that is completed, it's on its own, it's housed, it's, it's not going to change no matter what I do. So that's my first one, using the gradients, using blend modes, um, using that warp effect for the text. The next one I want to do is this sort of really contrasty inside of a circle one. So it's very similar, I'm going to draw myself a circle. I'm going to make that a trippy colour, a bright pink. The outline off it. Then I'm going to write my text out again. Now in this one I really do want it as tall as possible so I'm going to warp this so that it fits in that circle. So you'll see if I go straight to Edit Transform Warp, I've got lots of different options here. So I've got things like Bulge, which will bulge it up and out. But you can see this empty part at the bottom, because my box was sort of not big enough, my text wasn't tall enough, I've got this really empty area at the bottom. Even if I put that on like full bend, it's really not going to do it. I could try... one called Inflame, which is similar. But you can see it sort of goes out more than it goes up. So really, before I get started, I want to start with that kind of box. I'm going to squish this. I'm going to hold Shift to sort of squish it, and then stretch. So 
So already it feels a bit more like it sort of fits within that shape that I'm trying to achieve. Like so. And then when I do edit, transform and warp, it should be much easier. So you can see already that looks a lot better. So I'm just going to control that down a little bit so that it fits within that circle. I'm going to do that sort of effect, but I'm going to really make the whole thing a little bit shorter and a little bit smaller. Okay, so that's pretty much there. It is obviously trial and error with this kind of thing. Um, it's really about getting the sort of shape that you want and getting comfortable with how it works and just playing around with it until you're happy with it. Uh, so now I'm going to go for a contrasting colour. I'm going to go probably bright yellow. And then we have that. You could add gradients to these if you wanted them to look a little bit more exciting, a little bit more funky. Um, that's up to you. Last one I'm going to do is this sort of liquefied style, so where it feels as though it's sort of melting or dripping down the page. Um, so, same process. Type out my word. This time I'm going to have it in, let's go with a, a blue. Now, I do need to rasterize this again, and I'm just going to make my box so that it fits my text. And I'm going to stretch it a little bit. So, I'm going to rasterize it, and then I'm going to go to Filter and Liquify. There are other effects in there, there's blurs and things like that that you can try, but Liquify for me is the one that works best in terms of this sort of melty, draggy effect. You can see we've got different things on here. I'm only going to use the top one, and I can control my size of that up here. So if I zoom in for you. So I've got quite a small brush tool here, and I'm going to click and drag, and you can see it gives it a really small little sort of driplet. If I do bigger, you can see it pulls the whole letter. So it really depends on how you want this to look, your control of the sort of size of the brush, whether you want the whole letter distorted or just parts of it. You can sort of drag these about as you want really um, and it just depends where you click and drag as to what sort of effect you get. This can slow your computer down so I would do it a little bit at a time and just be patient with it. Um, it can cause Photoshop to be a little bit laggy so just be really sort of patient with this. There is another little effect you can do here, which is twirl. So if I show you what twirl does, you can see it sort of twirls that bit round, which can be quite interesting. Um, at the end of the day, we want this text still be, to be readable. That's the important thing, is that we can still read it, and we can still understand what it says. So actually, I've probably gone a bit too far there. I'm actually going to drag that back into place a little bit. Drag some of that down. And have that. Okay, so once I'm happy there, I can click OK. So you can see that's now applied to my text, and then all I'm going to do is duplicate it, put it over the top, put that layer behind in my layers panel, 
Now, if I just move this out of the way a second so you can see, because it's rasterized, I can't change the color of that anymore. I can't just go back into my text tool and change the color of it. It's no longer a piece of text. So in order to change the color, I've got to use my paint bucket tool. So I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna change that to a nice bright yellow, and I'm gonna paint bucket tool on those bits of text to fill them in. So now I can pop that back behind here. Now I could just misalign it if I wanted to, but that's sort of glitchy effect. What I'm actually gonna do is stretch it like this so it looks as though it's dripping sort of even further. You could obviously keep going, so I could do another one of those over the, again. Make that maybe this pink colour. Let's write that pink on for the rest. Put the blue back over the top, put the yellow underneath. So it's up to you sort of how far you want to go with this. There are some of those other effects. If I copy and paste this layer so you can sort of see what those other effects do, make it that a bit smaller. So obviously we've liquefied this, we could have done things like blur, so if we do like a motion blur, and you see it sort of makes it look quite trippy, you can change the angle that that blur goes in. We've got things like zigzag, I'll zoom out so you can see. sort of twists your letters a bit so you get these sort of like wavy effects which are quite cool you can change where that comes from and how it affects your text so there are some of these other sort of distortion or blur effects that I would recommend to give it that sort of trippy effect so those are our three different ways of doing psychedelic typography we've got this sort of melted effect we've got this warp with a gradient and then we've got this warp to make it fit inside a shape. Um, loads of things to play around with. Obviously understanding how to rasterize text, thinking about your colors, whether you want to use gradients, how to use gradients. Obviously if I wanted this to be a bit more trippy, I could think about my blend modes. So I could start to have these multiply over the top of each other or things like that. And then we things like that, so you can see we get even more sort of layers of distortion, but that makes it quite hard to read. So have a play around, experiment with those warp effects, experiment with some of those blur distortion tools and see how you get on.